everyone, we are here live, coming at you from New Hope Radio, Swansea, Massachusetts, semi-luxurious studios here at the New Hope Christian Church in Swansea. Hope you're getting us on 1590 WARV on the AM dial, or maybe streaming us on WARV.net or Facebook at NewHopeCC.tv. Also got a YouTube channel there too, I don't know if we're streaming on that yet, I don't know if there's any point in doing that. See, we've got Facebook here. But we're glad that you're here and join the chat. Uh, looking forward to a good group today. Got a good topic on hand. It's really going to be very practical, something that I think we all can benefit from. So I'm glad you tuned in. We're going to talk a little bit today about lifestyle. And lifestyle is important. You know why? It's who you are. It's what you are. It's what you do. Somebody describes lifestyle like this. The consistent, integrated way of life of an individual as typified by his or her manner, attitudes, possessions, etc. What's your lifestyle? Your lifestyle is characterized by what you do, what you have, where you go. It's how you spend your life. That's lifestyle. And that's why this is a good topic today. We're going to talk a little bit about the physical lifestyle, just very briefly. And then we're going to see how the spiritual lifestyle is also as important, if not more important. And yet a lot of folks don't give much credence to the spiritual lifestyle at all. So we're going to see how they're both really, really important because you have two lifestyles. You have a physical one. And you also have a spiritual one. Now I see that the chat room's loading up here on Facebook. Our host Aaron is here. He's waiting to greet you. Brian's already on board. So come on, let's check in. Let us know that you're out there, okay? Let me read you a little bit of research that someone did. Dr. Dean Ornish. He shares some research that he recently did at a TED conference. You ever see the, the TED conferences? I watch them online sometimes. They're pretty good. Some are really dumb, but some are really good. And you just got to hit it right, you know, because they're like liberal a little bit. But they got some good things going on there. They're very short, 10, 15 minute speeches. Uh, just go to TED dot something or other and you'll find it online. Okay. And this doctor, he's going to show that the health, healthy lifestyle habits can affect a person at a genetic level. Which means what? Well, here's what he said. The proverbial fountain of youth may not exist. Oh, we know that. Ask Ponce de Leon. He was looking for it. I think it was just a reason to go to Florida myself. But he said, lifestyle changes can do the same thing. Wow. We don't have a fountain of youth, but lifestyle changes, oh, can help keep you young. Some would give millions of whatever they had to buy an extra 14 years of life. But according to the latest research, it's just four relatively simple behavior adjustments that combined could add well over a decade, wow, 10 years, to your life expectancy. So we're saying four things. If you combine these things, you can live 10 years longer. Okay? Now, the research headed by Dr. K.T. Kaur, I don't want to bore you with all the names, but I got to give credit where credit is due, at the Cambridge Institute of Public Health, here's what he discovered. Number one, people that exercise regularly. Number two, ate five portions of fruit and vegetables a day. Number three, didn't smoke. Number four, didn't drink excessively. He said, will on average live 14 years longer than those who do not follow these behaviors. You know what? I'm like, that doesn't look too tough. Eat your fruits and vegetables. Get a little workout in. Go for a walk. Lift up some milk cartons. Don't drink excessively. Don't smoke. You're in for 14 more years of life. He said, research on the bone health of one of the oldest persons in the world 
raises the question of which has the most effect on the human lifespan, genetics or a healthy lifestyle or a combination of the two. Notice this. Research reveals that there were no genetic modifications. Now that simply means that, you know, this guy wasn't on steroids or anything like that. That could have contributed to the longevity of a <laughs> 100 and 14-year-old Spaniard. 114! The, reach ter the research team, directed by, and then it's got this Spanish name, and then it's Adolfo Diaz Perez, pointed out, here's what it was, a healthy lifestyle, a Mediterranean diet, a temperate climate, and daily bicycling until the age of 102. That's why this guy at 114 was so healthy. See, it's not about living long. It's about living long and healthy. And that's what they're saying here. So, I wanted to establish that physical health can be achieved by doing the right thing. That's basically what I'm saying. Now I want to transition over and show you today that spiritual health can be achieved by doing the right thing. And I'll tell you what, if you want to be balanced in life, you've got to have both. It's good to have physical health, and it's good to have spiritual health. Now, a lot of folks don't have physical health. But you can have spiritual health, and that can override physical health. So, we're going we're gonna to transition back to the Old Testament. King David. Oh, man. He wanted so desperately to build a house for God. He wanted to build the temple. Remember, up until then, he was in a tent. I want to build God a temple. And David collected all the materials that were needed. And then at the last moment, God said to David, and he told him, because he was a man of war, because he shed blood, God wouldn't let him build his house. Ain't that a kicker? David was a great general, a great military leader. And he served God well. But God said, you know, I can't have you build my house. But he did choose David's son, Solomon, to carry out the work. So let me read you a little bit of what went on here in First Chronicles chapter 28. God said to David, Your son Solomon is the one who shall build my house and my courts. For I have chosen him to be a son to me, and I will be a father to him. I will establish his kingdom forever if he resolutely performs my commandments and my ordinances as is done now. In other words, he's saying he's got to walk in my ways. So now, in the sight of all Israel, the assembly of the Lord, and in the hearing of our God, observe and seek after all the commandments of the Lord your God, so that you may possess the good land and bequeath it to your sons after you forever. What is God saying to David? He said, listen, you do the right thing for me, I'll do the right thing for you. That's it. You want to be blessed in life, you do the right thing for God, God will do the right thing for you. That's what he's telling David. He said, as for you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father and serve him with a whole heart and a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands every intent of the thoughts. If you seek him, he will let you find him. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. Now, I'm reading these scriptures because in these scriptures, we have six principles for a healthy lifestyle. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to point them out to you. If you want a healthy lifestyle... There are six principles in these scriptures that God gave to Solomon that we can adapt to our own lives. God continued and he said, Consider now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a house for the sanctuary. Be courageous and act. Okay? Now, let me ask you a question today. Would you want your life to be radical? And when I say radical, I mean do you want it to be a consistent, serious walk? Or do you want it to just be, you know, 
occasional. There's a difference between lifestyle and occasional. People that do things occasionally don't get good at those things. People that do things as a lifestyle, they get good at those things. It could be learning a musical instrument, it could be working out, it could be whatever it is. If you do it occasionally, you'll always be mediocre. But if it becomes part of your routine, you will excel. Okay? So that's the question today. Do you want to excel or do you want to be uh, mediocre? Well, I'm going to try to motivate you today that you would excel. That you would excel spiritually. Because I want to tell you something. If you can excel spiritually, that will impact all the other aspects of your life. See, the, the home base of our life is our spiritual life. And then that branches out into all relationships, employment, uh, pressure, stress, how to handle the things that life throws at you. The resources are in your spiritual inventory. And that's why it's good to have a spiritual inventory. Okay? All right. So let me motivate you today with six lifestyle principles, all taken from these scriptures. Number one, here's number one. You can write this down. Aaron will put it up there for you. Know God personally. That's where it begins. Know God personally. What did God say to Solomon in verse 9? Know the God of your father. Don't let your father's faith be what you lean on. You have to have your own faith. You have to go get your faith. It's like somebody can't eat for you. Somebody can't breathe for you. Somebody can't drink for you. You'll die. You have to eat for yourself. You have to breathe for yourself. You have to drink for yourself. And so it is with faith. You have to have your own faith. You can't rely on the faith of someone else. So know God personally. God said to Solomon, to know God the way David knew him. Oh, you know what the Bible says about David? He was a man after God's own heart. He knew God well. He was, see, here's the thing. Man, David was far from perfect. Oh, man, half of his life was blunders. Let me tell you something. But you know what? He still knew God, and he loved God, and he walked with God. He made a lot of mistakes. He did some really bad things. But he never walked away from God. And that doesn't mean, you know, see, some people think, oh, I can't walk with God, I'm not good enough. Or I have to be at a certain level, I have to have perfection. No, none of us are good enough and none of us can have perfection. You walk with God in spite, oh, I like this part. You walk with God in spite of who you are. That's what you do. You walk with God in spite of what you've done. You just walk with God. Know God personally. For the many ways David knew God, perhaps as his helper and deliverer, he knew him in a very intimate way. David wrote most of the Psalms in the Old Testament. And in one Psalm he said, I call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. He knew that God was his refuge. He knew that he could go to God when in trouble, and God would deliver him. Secondly, after knowing God personally, lifestyle change number two. Know what God wants. See, as you get to know who God is, you get to know what's God's will. Because God has a will. God has a will for all of humanity, and he also has a will for all of us individually. In verse 9, God said to Solomon, Serve him with a whole heart and a willing mind. What's a whole heart? All of you. All of you. And a willing mind. Be pleased to do it. Don't do it grudgingly. Oh, I gotta go do this. I gotta... No, do it willingly. You know what it said about Jesus? That it was his delight to do the Father's will. He said, I delight to do your will, O God, because your law is written within my heart. See, when the word of God is inside of you, when it truly is inside of you, you will want to fulfill it. 
you will want to carry it out because you know it's good for you. That God's will for you is perfect and just and right. It really is. Again, what are we talking about here? Lifestyle. We're not talking about doing something occasionally. We're talking about, no, this is my way of life. This is how I live. This is who I am. That's what this is about. This is how you get spiritual health. Okay? Number three, seek Him. God said, if you seek me, you'll find me. You know why a lot of people haven't found God today? They haven't looked. He's there. He's like waiting to be found. He's waiting for people just to call out to him. God, where are you? He's like, man, here I am. I've been waiting for you. To seek means to tread or to frequent. It's like walking a path. It's like always seeking God is what it means. Seeking God all the time. Seeking God every day. It's like having a routine. Do you go to the same gas station every week? I do. I try to. Sometimes I don't get to that particular one. But I usually go to the same gas station every week. You know why? Because they got the best prices. And then if I get a car wash, whoop, price comes down even more. And it's on my way home. It's not out of my way. So I usually go to the same gas station every week. I frequent that gas station. And you may have places that you frequent and you go there consistently, continually. God is saying, I want you to seek me every day. How do you seek God every day? Well, you know what? You talk to him. Uh, you can read his word. I read a chapter every morning before I leave the house just to kind of get in tune with God. Go through a book of the Bible. I just read a chapter. What does that take me? Five minutes. I think about it. Might write down a few things. Some of my messages come from just my daily reading. So, this is about regularly seeking after God so much that you like wear a path. Like when you walk through the woods the same way every day, you wear a path in the woods. Okay? You're wearing a path to God. Have you done that? Have you worn a path to God? That's what you need to do if you're going to have a healthy, spiritual lifestyle. Okay? Number four. Know your calling. Hmm. Verse 10. You know what God said to Solomon? Consider now, for the Lord has chosen you. Wow. God chose Solomon to do what? To build his temple. To build his house. Solomon knew what he had to do. Let me ask you. Do you? Do you know what you have to do for God? I think it, it, could be, it could change throughout our life. When you have little children, God says, I want you to raise those children. you got little sons and daughters, you raise them. That's what you do. And then when the kids get older and a little more independent, God might put a different calling on your life. Well, I want you to go and I want you to accomplish this. Because you've got gifts and talents that you use for the kingdom. But he, what God does, He gives us a life that is purposeful. Nothing better than having a purposeful life. For having a reason to get up in the morning. You know, a lot of folks don't have a reason to get up in the morning. And you know what? They don't get up. They sleep till 10, 11, 12. Why? No reason. Man, you got to have a reason. God's got a calling on your life. That's the reason to get up. You've got to discover what that calling is. It might not be to build a temple for God, like Solomon, but every one of us have a calling. Paul said, Consider your calling, brethren. Of course, he's talking to Christians here. That not many were called according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble. That's good. You know what God calls? <laughs> God calls the simple people. Here I am. Here are you. God calls common people. When he called his disciples, he didn't go to the synagogue. He didn't go to the university. He went to the beach. And he found some fishermen. And then he went to a tax booth. And he found a tax collector. He didn't find the brightest and the bravest. But he found people that were, here it comes, 
available. Available. The number one quality you need to be used by God? Availability. God will do the rest. Don't you worry. If you make yourself available, He will do the rest. Don't look at yourself and say, Oh man, I don't have what it takes. None of us do. The Old Testament's filled with stories of people that thought they didn't have what it took. And God filled them with His power, and man, like a rocket. They went out and did great, great things. Jephthah, Gideon. Man, these are the disciples themselves. You know, it's like, come on. It was, it was God in them that allowed them to do these things. Okay? Okay, the fifth part of your lifestyle change. Here it comes. Be courageous. you got to be brave. You can't be wimpy, skimpy, coward, afraid of your own shadow. God said to, Sol to Solomon, he said, listen, be courageous. Don't be afraid to tackle this big job. You go right at it. Don't you worry. You know how many big jobs people have gone after? If they were afraid, they'd never get done. Somebody had to step out of the the rocket the first time and walk in space. Think that was a little scary? Probably. How about, uh, how about the guy that tested the first parachute? You think that was a little scary? No one ever parachuted before. Somebody's got to Somebody's got to make the first jump. Who's going to do it? Not me. Well, somebody did. That was scary, but he did it, and now everybody jumps. You see, there's got to be a first time for everything. Be courageous. You know what it means? Not only be strong, seize the moment. That there are opportunities that come our way. Man, they could be gone. They come and they go. They're like waves. A wave comes and a wave goes. you got to seize it when it comes. It might never come back. Let me ask you, when do we need strength? When do we need power? You know when? In times of resistance. When things are working against you, that's when you need strength. Have you ever been to the beach? Anybody out there ever been to the beach? Ever been out there in the waves? Standing up in the waves? What happens when a big wave comes crashing down on you? What do you do? You dig your feet into the sand, right? And you like brace yourself. You put all your strength into standing up against the opposition of that wave. You're resisting it so it doesn't knock you over. And wait, sometimes we just have to dig our feet in. Don't quit. Dig your feet in. If God has given you something to do and it's an opportunity, you dig your feet in and you do it. You go get it. And you know, okay, there's going to be resistance. That's okay. I'm digging in. You're digging in and you will make it. All right, the last one I have for you, this is so simple. Watch this. Do it. Do it. You know what God said to Solomon, the last thing he said? He said, act. Now go act. Go do it. I told you all these things. I would be with you. Seek me. You'll find me. I will empower you. I've chosen you. Now go do it. Sometimes you're just going to get moving. You just can't sit there, well, I'm praying about it. No, you got to get moving. Did you ever notice the Nike logo? What's it on? The Nike logo is on a sneaker. You know what it's not on? A pillow. It's not on a pillow. Because the Nike logo means, just do it. You put those sneakers on and you just run. And you just jump. And you do whatever those sneakers are for. It's not on a pillow. I've never seen a Nike logo on a pillow. A pillow's like for doing nothing. Sleeping. God says, now go do it. I want to ask some of you today, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for to do something great with your life? And I don't mean do one thing. I mean, have a great lifestyle. Have a great spiritual lifestyle. This is the path to spiritual health. Sure, we all want to be physically healthy. 
But man, we should want to be spiritually healthy at the same time. We should. So, what did I say today? Here are six principles to live by. Okay? We're going to review, and then I'm done. Number one, know God personally. Somebody else can't know Him for you. Know God personally. Number two, know what God wants. Know His will for your life. You know why? That's the place of blessing. That's the place of reward. That's the place of contentment. That's a good place to be when you know God's will. Okay? Number three, seek Him continually. Be a path to God. Always seek Him out. Like, you know, you walk down, you walk the same road every day, you make a path. Do that with God. Walk that same road every day. I have a routine every morning. It's like clockwork. And if I mess up my routine, I'm messed up all day long. And part of my routine is sitting down on the couch and reading a chapter out of God's Word. That's part of the routine. Every single morning, seven days a week. And there's a few other things around there. You know, you make the coffee, you do this, you do that, you know. But it's, the, it's like I beat a path to God every morning. Because I want a healthy spiritual lifestyle. Number four, know your calling. God has given you spiritual gifts. He's given you talents and abilities to use them for His glory. Number five, be courageous. Don't be afraid. Seize the opportunity. Go get it. Dig in when there's resistance. And then lastly, now go do it. Just go do it. Get it done. And I'll tell you what, when you put these principles into play, you will be a better person, you will enjoy a better life, you'll have better relationships, things will be better all the way around. Hey, thanks for coming along today. Hope it was helpful. Hit share, let your friends hear this program, and you can check it out later to review on your own so you can have that spiritual, healthy lifestyle. I'll see you tomorrow for more.